All right. Three, two, one. Can you hear me good? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Three, two, one. And we are back at it uh, again. Okay. Adventures of the Black Nerds. I am Baron J67. I'm T Jones. And uh, this is episode 31, correct? This shit is crazy. Crazy. I know, dog. Uh, I was just telling my wife that I've been doing this for 31 episodes. I didn't even know. Like, dog, I was like, boy, that sounds like a lot. Like, it's it, like right, <laughs> like yeah, and, and, and you know what's so crazy? Nah, I'm just um, kidding, you guys. We just it, kidding. I want to say we almost hit a year. No, we passed a year from when we first started. No, I think was it August we started, or uh, I think I wrote it down. Let's see. Damn. I even wrote the notes. Actually, it was six twenty eight uh, when we talked about can I use your Wi Fi? Uh, uh, okay. Video. Yeah. So we've eclipsed. Our one year anniversary. One year Yay. anniversary. Yeah, we did it. We did Maybe it. Maybe like a month or two ago, <laughs> but we did so, it. Man, listen, man, yeah. we, 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 it's a growing process with us. We got a lot going on. Yes. We got a lot of things to do. Got a lot of things to talk about. Um, actually, we wanted to touch. You know what? Speaking of, well, it ain't really, really a segue, but the Nathan Drake yes. fan film. Actually, you yes. just told me about that, and I just watched Uncharted. it today. Uncharted. Yes. Two Uncharted. Naughty Dog's Uncharted. That's a great game. That and is and a, you know... Every single one of them was a great game. So you just watched it, so it's fresh on your mind. Yes. What did you think? I Okay, so I thought it was dope. I, I love the cheesiness of the action because pause, that's how... Pause. One sec. One sec. Subscribe. You guys hit the subscribe button. Um, follow us on Twitch. Uh, you T Jones with the X in front of it, and then Baron J six seven. Everything's in uh, the description below on YouTube. Yeah, uh, check us out on Spreaker. Spreaker for shout out Tone Def Tone Radio. They are the Tone guys. Def Radio. Tone Def Radio. Actually, Everything for you. Check out. Also check out a uh, Urban Recon Squad. Right. Urban Recon. 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 <clears throat> Urban Rec- Recon Squad. Squad. It's actually um, what? So is it just about comic books on that? Comics. Just about comics. Yep. Going there for any information you need on comics. They they lay mm-hmm. it down over there. So, um, but yeah, that was a that was a dope plug right in the middle of my my thought. I really forgot what I was saying. You were talking about Uncharted and how cheesy and build okay. it was. Perfect. So, um, it, the action was real cheesy, right? And even his. Even him, like as the actor himself, he's like a Nathan Fillion. But what mm-hmm. makes it so funny and makes it so like almost mm-hmm. relatable is I could see. Oh well, if, when you play as Nathan Drake, he's cheesy. He says he's super cheesy, cheesy stuff. The action is kind of I kind of it kind of looks and feels like that's how he would do it. So I love the way it looks. I love the way I, I and then it's funny. The only thing I the only thing I had something to say about was Sully. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Why isn't he fat? Yeah, he's not fat enough. And and but and Sully isn't that old though. He's not uh, that old. Yeah. No, he's In not. In the fourth one, he is. The fourth he's one. All gray. The fourth that's one. that's that's what this is supposed to be after. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, he already found everything. El Dorado, all of that. He already did all. That. All I'm saying. Uh, oh well, and I'm late to this. So I don't even know when that came out. <clears throat> but um, uh, it came out last week, I believe. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm not. I'm not that. You're late. not. You're not too far behind. Yeah, but me. I enjoyed it. Uh, I just had to complain about Sully because that's what I do. I, I complain about those things. <laughs> um, you know what? For me, I thought it was epic mm. and it was it was it was so dope because like you said it really encompassed everything about um nathan drake yeah. like everything from the quips uh how quick he was uh even when they did the jump the jump uh the leap and attack to the guy with yeah, the gun exactly. that was perfect um and i even like the fact that Nathan Fillion fits along with the timeline mm-hmm. because Nathan's an older uh, Nathan Fillion is the actor. He is uh, and he plays Nathan Drake. Um, he is a older actor now, yeah, and he fit along with how I would expect Nathan Drake to look at but this point in his career. Nathan Drake, I mean, I would even 
I, I he's he know. even he moves totally different in the fourth one. Like he's still active and agile, but he you could tell he's an older man. Did you beat like, beat the fourth the fourth one? No, but I watched a crap ton of video. On okay, it. yeah, I want to. You know what? I um, I wonder if they had the the multiplayer for the fourth one. I don't know. That's Somebody let us know in the comments. Thought, yeah. Um, I, but I, it's funny. I have the fourth one. I have it. <laughs> I just well, you can I you can bring it down when you bring down the uh, the DS. See how I put them on the spot right there, guys. Uh, I just said it to you. Come on, man. Can you not put uh-huh. me on blast? Jesus, I still got the I got DS. You. I'm still shiny hunting for shit. But anyway, um, then don't get bring it back yet. Just keep you shiny hunting until you're done. Yeah. So, cause every shiny I get, you get. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. All right. Cool. Um. Okay. So yeah. I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. I I actually like those. Like I even yeah. like the, the the funny skits about PUBG and the shit. That oh, those are amazing. hacker versus hacker was <laughs> hilarious. He brought out like a he made a sand shield out of uh out of pants. Yeah. <laughs> no, did you, the the funniest one, the by far the funniest one was when, or to me at least, was when uh the guy his teammate died. He got shot. And he was like, he runs over to get him. Your mic super cut out. Oh, my, on my you know end. what? Hold on. <clears throat> so, basically. Right there. Can you hear me? I don't know what he's doing right now. but Can you hear me? The artist formerly known as XT Jones is sitting here pop locking and stopping. Dropping. Can you hear Hold me? On. I am Let actually me. talking. Uh-uh. Okay. So. Let's see. Is that and better? We, and we're back. All right. Perfect. Let's so. Go. So, now. So, listen. Technical difficulty. All right. Stop. I was, oh, okay. I guess I can't. I rhyme and I reap. I reap and I rhyme. <laughs> the dialogues, the top five rappers of all time. Dylan, dialogue, 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 dialogue. Dial- dial- I swear he said six dialogues. <laughs> you he didn't say five. I spit on fire. Spit on fire. <laughs> Ooh, boy. How do you choke out White Cliff? Like I that have one. No clue, but I'm gonna bro. Tell you- I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm about to find those because I have them, and I'm about to watch the shit out of them. Oh my god! Dave Chappelle is legendary, man. But, uh, damn. What but was yeah, that about? see there we go. Again. You, I Come was on. talking to. Uh, it was uh, no PUBG. The PUBG. Yes. So um, so my, my favorite one was when. Uh, the guy he goes down. One of the, they're playing squads, and he tells the other guys. He goes, "Hey, take off! I'll, I'll, re- I'll revive him." So he goes up to the dead oh. body, and he goes, "Oh, so, remember that uh, fifteen times scope that you got back there?" <laughs> he starts reviving them. He's like, "Yeah, give me up, man." He's getting. He's up. like, "Oh, and keep holding it." <laughs> and then he stops and he goes, "Yeah, man. Um, so I, I really wanted that scope." He was like, "Okay, man, <laughs> just can you get me up?" And he he starts reviving them again, and then he, and says, then he stopped. Yeah, man. So you know, you you picked it up, and I and he he keeps doing it, and he finally gets down to the last sliver, and he goes, "All right, man." He was like, "Stop playing and pick me up." He goes to revive him, and he died. He goes, "Oh man." He goes, "Hey, he died, man." He starts searching his body. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Priceless. I I love those. I love when 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 fans. Have the not only the time but the drive and the, the yes. imagination to create fan films and fan, um, like even comedy skits towards specific mm-hmm. games that you know that uh, that are right now that are in the moment. Like those PUBG ones are in the moment, so I'm cool with those. But I know the next topic was actually supposed to be what games will we like to see as a movie, as a movie or or film or whatever. Cartoon, whatever. Um, I I would have to say since it's so fresh right now, like a God of War. I know we've had uh, we've had Greek mythology, but imagine getting one on Kratos, because if you didn't know, Kratos is actual is actually a Greek as a is a character in Greek mythology, but he's nothing like this Kratos that we have. <laughs> I forget. I I I remember reading up on it. I just don't remember it too much. But he's nothing like that character. So imagine getting one on Kratos, like a guy who's trying to, I'm trying to kill the gods, and it it actually fit because imagine it would make a great movie. Yeah, it, it oh. would literally be like history repeating himself. Because look, the gods killed the the, the Titans. 
They went after the Titans, so now you got somebody coming and taking over for them or trying to take them out. But I wouldn't I would enjoy that. Yeah, that would be dope. And this is actually kind of bouncing back to the uh to the Uncharted fan film. Mm-hmm. Somebody brought up a point because I, I love looking at all sides. It it just adds it makes everything a little more dynamic. Yeah. Uh somebody added the point. They were like, as much as I enjoyed that, I felt it was unnecessary because if you took all the cutscenes of Uncharted from one to four, it plays out like the ultimate movie. It plays out like an Indiana Jones movie. Yeah. Um, just like God of War. And it's funny, and the reason that really popped up was because even with God of War, I felt, you know what? I actually pissed some people off. Everybody was like, God of War, the new God of War is game of the year. And I was like, it was dope. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Mm-hmm. But it felt more like a good movie, an amazing movie. Yeah. Than game of the year, I would and agree. My, and my only reason for saying this is because the height and most of the combos for all the enemies was very copy and paste. Um, they were I copy like, and paste, like all the way through the same uh, from the trolls to the either they were throwing ice bombs, they were throwing lava bombs. Yeah, the trolls were spitting either lava or they were throwing. You know, mm-hmm. it felt. It, it felt like the, but it was enough to carry me through the story. And it didn't, I, like I sat here and watched my little brother play the entire game. And I felt like I was watching an amazing movie. Yeah. Now, do I think it's game of the year? Because it, would it be game of the year if it was gameplay alone? I, I, no, I would say no. No. And that's because the that, game, to be honest, if you, the, Okay. It didn't even have dope boss battles like the all the other game uh, God of Wars. It, it did not because, and like that's just me being so, honest. You, like you, said, I'm about to piss some people off. Yeah, I mean, as a diehard God of War fan, that paid I'm a diehard fan. Them, I've oh yeah, every single one of them. Um, you can't. This isn't the best God of War. It had so much to go along with it. You could do so much more exploration after the fact. But I complained about that in the beginning of this game coming out. And the reason being is because they gave you a dope game that you could play through, collect everything as you play through, and then it finishes. Whereas all of that shit after the fact don't mean nothing. It really doesn't mean anything because who cares? Unless you're a trophy well, hunter take that or back. achievement hunter. They, people have been finding uh, finding stuff. Yeah, they've been like, finding Easter eggs. Okay, but what I mean by that is... Story driving. Story driving stuff. Game, uh, actual... Um, I, let me just stick to the story driving stuff because this is going to tie into my point. Um, exactly. With with you saying what you said about uh, movies actually, if you just take the cutscenes, it'll make a great movie. I feel like that's kind of that's like a, a like a it's almost expected of these games like Uncharted those and games because this is where you Sony get the game. this is where yeah. you get the mindset from the whole mindset of oh yeah that'll be a dope movie. Yeah, why? Because those cuts. It already is a dope movie. Amazing. So even if you took it and you created like like imagine instead of seeing somebody fighting, yeah, the storyline is dope and that's what we get to see. But you get to see actual action filmed fights play out. Imagine imagine Kratos fighting Hades in God of War Three. Ooh. Imagine, I think that was God of War three, or even Hercules, or even when he was fighting her. Imagine that fight. Ooh, you, you know he's gonna win, but imagine that it's just seeing that. The way you know what it would up. look like? It would look very similar to Game of Thrones when Oberon fought the mountain. Oh, okay, yeah. See, Something it would like look. That. It would look. It would look along those lines. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, of course, a little more dramatic and it has a little to be, more. These are yeah, gods jumping gods. feet in the air and yeah, but <laughs> as in like and walls and stuff. yeah. I, I, um, those, now that's what let, I'm let me about. tell you when I when I think video game inspired movies because mm-hmm. I think video game inspired movies do better than video game straight to film. Like a lot of people didn't like the Super Mario movie. I loved it. I thought it was quirky enough and silly. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I didn't expect it to be uh what the Super skipping. Mario movie the the one with the king the Goombas walking around looking stupid in the big suits with the shoulders. Well you, that came out when we were kids? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, the old that one. Was dope. Yeah. 
I and thought it was, was dope. I think that was dope because everybody knew the that, dinosaur that loved <laughs> <laughs> that loved the uh, Mario. Yeah, but it, it was. I mean, all in all, it was a super cheesy movie. Mm-hmm. But um, I love nowhere it. near. Yeah, nowhere near what the real story was going on. Mm-hmm. But yes, of it, yeah. Now, what I would love to see if jump piggybacking on what you said with God of War. Yeah, I would love to see God of War, the most recent one, told in a movie from the perspective of um, his son Artemis. Or Atreus? Yes, or oh, Atreus. Yeah. Um, or we know his real name, but I'm not trying to spoil anything. Mm-hmm. But um, but I would love to see Atreus just see him watching everything happen. Like even even if they kind of tell it as a side story, like him just giving a recap of his life, talking about his dad. So he and, like narrates it throughout. Yeah, yeah. throughout yeah. his way. But yeah, you but, know. But see, even that would be dope. That That'd would be, be dope. dope because that would be sick. Think about it. You get we know Kratos' perspective. Yeah. There's a whole different perspective, a whole different thought process on when you're going through. And then think about it as well. We don't really Atreus is a is like our sidekick. He's like Tails exactly. in Sonic. Exactly. He disappears and reappears with an ultimate combo for it. <laughs> yeah. Out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere. So um, you get the you get to actually hear it from his perspective, hear what he's thinking in these moments, and just stuff like that. You get details from him that you may not have got, you may not have gotten playing, or may not even have heard playing the actual game. But that's neither here or there. I just think there's so many different ways they can go with that. Like yeah, imagine, oh, a million different ways. Yeah, they could take this and take it to a whole different realm. They could start off. They can go all the way back. To when he was mm-hmm. Kratos was in the army in the Spartan yeah. army, they could do so much with these video games. I and I always say that when you're playing with video games to movies, it's you have so much room to make a you have more room to make a great film than less room to, to fail. You see what I'm saying? And and you know what usually goes wrong though. Um, same same thing because whenever you try to reach a a big audience. This is why fan films are when you really look at them and if you really watch them, not financial success, but as in hitting the points, fan films usually do better at getting embodying what was going on than big yeah. box office cuz box office people, they're not trying to sell it to us cuz they know we're going to come. They're they know we're going to go. People who not they're trying come. to There you go. Exactly. Like they know we're coming. But that's but um, that's just like how we talk about the, the 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 people who are crunching numbers yes that's bean them, counters. Yeah, yeah them that's that's the type of people who you don't want this is why i would rather go see a, a fan film compared to go oh see yeah a triple a title especially it's a if it's a fan film on something that i enjoy like a god of war or, or any pretty much any video game even think about it look how many zombie films we have right exactly we play state of decay imagine yeah. if we got a state of decay like ultimate zombie film St- or state of the De- state of decay feels like the best version of a Walking Dead game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like because that's there's so I- much room to build. Like it's so yeah. much things you could do. You could literally have episodes upon episodes upon episodes about little 100%. things that we have yeah. inside the game oh bro hey so you know piggybacking on this let me tell you one of the um uh, one of the films i had an idea for um it was uh fallout Fall. now the, now this is this is how i would want the film to play out i would want it to be a kid born to a raider family um and then his family gets murdered out and uh, somebody from the Brotherhood of Steel finds him, and then they raise him up within the brother Brotherhood of Steel, and it leads up to the events of Fallout Three. Mm, okay. Um. So he's not a major character. He's not the carrier. He's not the the child who was prophesized, you know, to yeah. purify the waste. Yeah. That's not it's none of that. He is just. I, I feel like side characters for games that we've already experienced would make a better story bro, than to replay what we already know. I 100%. Because I felt like they would mess it up on purpose just to make it different. Yeah, but but this is this is the wiggle room that I'm saying you have this yeah. much room. Yeah, you got you could games. do you, you could do this anything. This much room to play with. You can't you could you ha- you would have to purposely fuck up fuck it up 
with this much room to create some type of movie or or web series or cartoon on a hell on a video look out so there um and i actually got to go back and watch them all but there's a web series for the walking dead and i know it's a semi off topic mm -hmm. but there's a web series there's a bunch of them that are legit official web series that tie into the tv show world and they show um they show hints of it like um there was a whole web series about the crash plane and fear of the walking dead mm -hmm. like all those people I never, dead really, on i never watched fear of the walking dead I never got through the first, uh, the second season because okay. it just felt it was hard for me to connect with the characters, and I didn't care about them. Everybody tells me that once you get past that point, it's actually very good. Yeah, I just need to go back and give it a fair chance. Okay. But the first season was so hard for me to get through, and I don't know, I don't know why it was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but it was dope to see how they tied in the web series, and then you get to that crash plane, and it literally. They go there and see the aftermath of what happened in the web series. Yeah, or I want to say they even did a web series about uh, Rick's machete. Um, like there, it, it's like just dope about Stuff like, like who that. had it before. Yeah, yeah and and that le that goes to your point. You don't have to. You it, the scope is this big. Yeah, like man. you, you can go any. You can go any route, but I just hate when they try to take the full original story we already know and love. And they try to recreate that. Mm -hmm. um, now I get it. I get why they do it. It makes sense on paper. Yeah. But you turn around and you make a Super Mario Brothers movie that has nothing, nothing to do with to do. Super Mario. Exactly. Um, I I would agree with like those type of games when they fully try to recreate the game with like if it's supposed to be action packed. Like yes. you see how we just talked about God of War. Imagine mm -hmm. us them giving us a God of War three. The full the full story from A to B, from him killing, from Kratos killing Poseidon, all the way down to the Hercules to the the Zeus vice, the Zeus uh -huh. fight where he kills Zeus. Um, and that ain't even no. So I was about to say spoiler alert, but if you ain't beat God of War three, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but imagine if you get that right, and they just make the action, the fighting, mm -hmm. so outrageously good that it's you you just. It's like I gotta love it, you know. Like I just have to love it because they just made the the action the action pack stuff outrageously good. I'm okay with that. I'm just you not know okay what? with when they recreate these. If they decide to like recreate these same titles and these same games, and it it really wasn't nothing. Like I'm expecting mm. the game. For example, think of Metal Gear Solid Four. Think of the fight with. Uh, where he, where he, where he transforms <laughs> liquid snake to solid snake to all of these snakes mm. to big boss. And you, when you have to fight that dude after your suits all busted and you're actually giving him the hands on top of that building. Imagine you recreating that, but it's like nothing. It's like a, scene, yeah. you know, like I want to like, see, that was one of the most iconic fight scenes. I want to, and then see, it kept bouncing back between metal gear solid and I, I wanna that see, one. I want to see the same type of camera angles in, yes. in, um, uh, in daredevil. Oh yeah. Mm. You have to, you mm. have to, you gotta, do you gotta have those that. wide shots, single shots. You got to have wide shots. You got to have single shots. You have to yeah. because that's what the game was. Yeah. That's why I was so... That's why jumping back to the Uncharted film, that's why I loved it so much because they literally did the action shooting scene just like the game. Mm -hmm. It almost felt like you went from a cut scene to the game. He even loaded his gun gun, and made a quip, made a quick joke. Like the game, yeah, and you seen the first it, is, shot it felt natural, took? it felt natural. The first shot he took, you see how they over his shoulder an ADS, yes, person ADS scope in, and the, yeah. it was just it was too good it to was be perfect. true, man. I, it I, was I thought perfect. it was amazing, and I'm not even just saying that, I'm just I'm saying that actually from a technical at the film standpoint, yeah, and breaking it down. I thought it, I I thought that was a great thing, and I hopefully it becomes something bigger than what it is now. Man, and it's so funny because even if they just, it, it's a way to give us Indiana Jones without giving us another Indiana Jones. Yeah, like it. I mean, it's unless you can figure out a way to get Shia LaBeouf to play play a young Indiana Jones again. Like it, it just. Um, I 
I enjoyed the hell out of that. Yeah. Like, I was sitting there jaw dropped, like, what the hell? Like, this is intense. And we, but we, we've always had this conversation about Uncharted being a movie. Like, oh, Uncharted man. Being, it, like, come on, just, they, made, they made Tomb Raider. Yeah, not either. <laughs> they yeah. made Tomb Raider. Give us something that we... They made a gang of yeah. Tomb Raiders. <laughs> Yeah, what are they? What is this? The third one, and then there's a fourth one coming. Jesus. I don't think they. I don't think they formally announced the, the second, one, yeah. the, the next, next one, one but it's is successful yeah. as the first one. Uh, the most recent take on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like how they're doing the whole youth building their back up. It's a way to reboot the franchise. Oh yeah, uh, like I, I think that's genius. That's always a dope way to reboot a franchise. Like, well, let's just go back to before we knew who they were today. Yeah, just Marvel. Don't do it with Spider Man. Ah, uh, if I have to watch Uncle Ben die, <laughs> please one more time. Don't do it with Spider Man. I'm begging you, dog. <laughs> Bro, oh my god, man, we were supposed to Ben get a Carnage film, like Ben. Ooh. We were supposed to I wanna, ben see, man, ben see all of the. If, we we it, seen we seen uh what was what was, that what was the the right was it right horn what was the the big dude what was his name the dude uh, well, we seen him in the uh, I think that was the, oh rhino rhino yeah it was the second I'm I'm playing too much Pokemon man yeah you said uh, right on I was yeah, like I said rhino or right horn or whatever but um yeah we seen him in the uh. That was the the second one to the second reboot, or was that the first one to the second reboot? That was the end. I want to say he was at the end of the first the reboot. End. Yeah, of the first. Yeah, of the second reboot. Re- the second reboot. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it would be the f- first reboot because the f- the, the second reboot was, is yeah, on. Good. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah, we were supposed to Ben see him, Ben see other villains. Come on, man! I I, okay, this my is Carnage film. <laughs> this is so funny when it comes to when it comes to the Spider Man, and this is more or less comics to movies, mm-hmm. not so much games to movies. Um, when it comes to Spider Man, I felt that the second Spider Man was was it? Cl- I I've, I enjoyed that. I, I thought like, he was it. I enjoyed the fact that they finally really pr- showed how strong he was mm-hmm. because it's. Spider-Man has never punched anybody full power. Nobody knows how strong Spider-Man is. He mm-hmm. always pulls back. Just like how the Flash rarely, if ever, runs full speed. Uh, it, it just I know that's <laughs> different than DC, but just to prove my point. Well, yeah. Um, so it felt like, like that whole first scene when he first got his powers and he's breaking everything in the house and mm-hmm. he's pulling the doors off and cracking the sinks and He's just destruct destroying everything he's touching because he does not fathom how strong he is. And I, I, I really enjoyed that. And then his uh his jokes, they were on point. They were just cheesy enough. Yeah. The action scenes, the whole Gwen Stacy thing. I thought like, he that was, was cool. That I was amazing. Was cool. Even even not even I love the first one. Even but they messed up on the third movie. That's where they totally messed up. I'm gonna tell you, even without looking at it from a comic book standpoint. That those movies, the the first reboot was all dope to me at least yeah. because they were um, his character related. If we all watched the Spider Man cartoon, his sure. character sounded like the cartoon guy. Like it really sure. did sound like you you watching a kid grow up from high school, then he gets out of high school, then he goes through this. Imagine if you would have got him first with with uh with Venom. I thought it would have been a way better movie. Tobey Maguire's cool and all, but just the Venom. The Venom was stupid. Yeah, come on. Venom man. was stupid. What are we doing? The Hobgoblin was okay. Uh-huh. Um, now Norman Osborn was dope. Mm-hmm. He that was, was dope the, in the first one. That was the you first. Know how one, much yeah. I? What did he say? He how much I sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> Man, ah! I just I think that uh yeah they need to dead the reboots on Spider Man just let it rock please. stick with yeah stick with this one I please. want to see Spider Man until he's gray hair Iron, we got three Iron Mans with the quote unquote new Marvel run right mm. why why we only got well no we got two they is it two so far with it's the only one Iron Man 
No, what are you talking I mean about? Movies. Oh, I don't. You can't call it a reboot, though. Oh, you're talking about within the timeline. Yes, we got three Iron oh, Man. I'm talking about the movies. We got movies. three of these movies with the quote unquote new Marvel, right? Yeah. And I'm talking about if we've had three, like, we've had three Spider Man. We should have had a grip of fucking Spider Man movies. Yeah. Oh, I, <clears> I get what you're saying. Spider Man has has a lot to his catalog. True. He now, really does. In his true. in his sector of the world, he has a lot in his catalog. So I, he, I just he does really bear a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know, I really think I I like Spider Man. Um, I think Marvel needs to uh, get their act together and find. Well, they're they're doing Carnage they're doing okay. They're doing okay Give, with uh, no, because we ain't seen Carnage yet. I don't think I think we're far away from Carnage. We too damn far, if you ask me. I know. Um, yeah, I I one hundred percent feel you on that. But now. Now going back to um now going back to like video game movies. Mm-hmm. Um another video game movie that would be pretty dope. Uh it just it all writes itself. Like you could I could just look down and pick a damn yeah, Dying pick Light. Game. Dying Light. Mm-hmm. Dying Light would be a do- But see, I'm gonna tell you when I think of a Dying Light movie, I see Sharknado. <laughs> like I felt like they would take it just a little too far. Too far like yeah. I don't know how far you could take it when it comes to zombies mm-hmm. and drop kicking <laughs> zombies off of buildings and basically parkouring across zombies. But so what I, did you? Oh, go ahead. Because I was going to ask you what what so what is your like? Do you like the Resident Evil movies? No, me neither. Uh, I was um, never into them as much as I was into the games. I w- do you I really wish they would take a step back and make a Resident Evil 2 esque esque movie mm-hmm. and make it a horror film and not an action film. Yeah. Like give me like thriller horror. Because like where you're not you don't have superpowers. That's what you, it was like. You're not as Wesker. You playing the fucking game, exactly. my language as you playing the game. Yes, we're, you're not yeah, Wesker you're Jr. Playing, you're playing as yeah. a police officer, friggin' superhero cop, destruction yeah. warrior, but the yeah. person actually holding the stick, controlling him, is freaked out of his mind. Yes, yes. Come on, man. Like, and I need to feel that. Yes. The movies weren't dark enough for me, even though they were pretty, like, even color-wise, it wasn't, they, they were well-lit, dark movies, if that makes any it sense. It was so, see, I, that was one mistake right there that they made like going the route they went with the with the movies they made an action movie yeah like come on man I it should have been it should have been legit horror yeah i agree or at least or at least a psychological thriller mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. where it's a cop drama that involves zombies but you don't know it's cuz remember for a long, for a good portion of Resident Evil 2 cuz i watched a bunch of videos yeah it seems like they didn't have no idea. At that point, they had no idea what was going on in Raccoon City. Yeah. Um. So that would have been dope for at least the first 30 minutes of the movie. It's just you don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then, boom, now it's a zombie survival movie. Exactly. Like, it, I just, I feel like it would just look amazing. Um, that would be but dope. But that, yeah, I'm, I only asked about that because it's so many uh, zombie games out there. And it's so many zombie things that we have, like The Walking Dead mm-hmm. and shit like that. Um, <clears throat> that you almost, in a sense, like it's written for you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The reason true. why the reason why I thought State of Decay was so cool because State of Decay can actually be a multitude of things. Like it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to have a main character. It doesn't. Nope. It doesn't have to have this community trying to. Build I just up. had two main characters die, and I didn't you know, realize it. Yeah. You could do so many, so many different things with with just the idea of state of decay. You know, zombie. You're in an area. You got to hunker down. You got to figure out this. You got to figure out that. Obviously, you have to have like the main mission in there. Yeah. But there's so many different things you could do. Like imagine. That's why I had a hard time getting into uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. It felt like there was no goal i know survival is the ultimate goal i'm not stupid but it felt felt hollow mm-hmm. like what why what you know who what when where why yeah 
the main thing why and that's funny that you said that like the big why like why? what do you you know why what are you what are you doing exactly you gotta have your main goal um it it, it just you gotta i don't know but okay well before we keep going because we could go on for on and on and on this bro so i i know we also wanted to talk about the call of duty battle royale now they only they came out with a trailer the other day Mm -hmm. that was like what two three minutes long if that and the last like 20 seconds was 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 the battle royale but if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't have known that because it wasn't like they said. And here's the trailer for the battle royale. Yeah, but they they do at the end of it. They show black. Yeah, out. they show. They've already black titled out. that. Yeah. Now, uh, I know we, we discussed like our thoughts on um, battle royale, so we won't get back into that too much. But yeah, we, that's we'll not talk about what we our thoughts on Call of Duty, Call of Duty's battle royale. Now, I'm a huge fan, and I think I've said this on here. Of 60 frame per second games. There's a lot of there's a lot of 30 frame per second games out there. And I think Call of Duty is the best at that because it's real snappy when you're playing. Real snappy mm-hmm. where you're playing. And uh I don't think I think in some of the games the aim assist was mad forgiving on people with horrible shots. It made whack people feel like gods in a sense, but it also made great people hit shots that they probably shouldn't have hit, but they're already great at the game. It made them hit crazy, outrageous shots that they shouldn't really have hit. I hope that it's a, it's a, the best of both worlds. I hope it's 60 frames per second still. I hope the aim assist isn't as crazy because people are going to be doing... We already see the crazy shit that people do with sniper rifles in a small, close quarter yeah. map. Imagine what these fools would be able to do from... 400 500 meters away on a on a big ass open world map getting trenched you know you see what i'm saying and that and one thing that they showed they already said it's going to be very vertical Mm -hmm. now i don't know if you did but i watched a video i watched a video the uh where they broke down frames Mm -hmm. they took the whole because it was really 20 seconds of that um and they took each frame and broke it down, and they showed a lot of buildings. They showed helico- a lot of the helicopter. They showed even somebody looking like they jumped out of, off a building with a squirrel suit. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a. Uh, um, I'm looking forward to it because I've always enjoyed Call of Duty for what it was. Snappy. It fixed my ADD. It gave me a fix. Mm-hmm. Like it was boom, 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 boom. When I wanted to feel like mindless running through doing stuff. And one thing I've noticed that the Call of Duties have progressively became more um adding more strategic factor. And I don't know if that stemmed from all the pro games or whatnot, but it's starting to feel like even the new game modes like war and whatnot, and now adding in uh what is this? Uh blackout. Or the battle royale, um, it, it's starting to it's starting to really feel. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I like it. It's starting to feel battlefield esque. Because mm-hmm. you know me, when it comes to shooters, if I had to tell you my ultimate shooter, what I would prefer to play over everything, it's battlefield. It's battlefield yeah. And it's and it and it's always be been the open areas, the destructibility, yeah. and um, the verticality. That's always been crucial to me. The fact that I could walk into a building. And somebody across the street can hit me through the window, the second floor window, as I'm going upstairs. Yeah, like stuff like that. So to be able to see that play out in Battlefield, I'm actually excited. Mm-hmm. I'm more excited than anything else. Now, um, I probably will not. Um, I don't know how much of it I'm gonna play, just because I feel like it shouldn't cost sixty dollars unless this all turns into. Uh, I don't know, man. I, See, this, this is and let me, remember. It's, this it's is its getting, own beta in September as well. So, yeah, I, I would we'll ass- be able to talk more about it then. I would assume, I would hope that it would be standard. Oh, but let me. And I remember you brought this up mm-hmm. and how betas are a problem. And it's piggybacking off of previous episodes. Yeah. Betas are a problem, and everything you get, every reason you gave for a beta being a problem, this game has that. It's giving us so much content that 
I wonder what else is there going to be. Well, I'm not fu- I'm not buying no beta. I would no. recommend the world don't go get no beta. Don't pre-order Call yeah. of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blank, no. Blank, yeah. Pre- do not pre-order do Call not, of Duty. Yeah. Oh, because no. you're going to play it for a month or however long it's out, and you're going to get the game, and that's the game. Yeah, be- and let me tell you why. Six maps, ten characters, six game modes. Mm-hmm. That's the beta. That's the beta for... That comes out in two days, or yes, okay. that's the beta from the trailer we just watched. So that's for now, the, that's for Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Yes, which yeah. so that's so not, now that's not the that's not the battle that's, royale. That's the no, game. that's not the battle royale. But my point is, how can you call that a beta? That sounds like a uh, open stress Listen, test. All of that shit that you just said, that got to be two percent of the game. If that's if that's if that's ten percent or more of the game, that's the fucking hot. game. That's the game, bro. Yeah, that is the game. Like, that's what they, the fact that you're giving me ten characters. Don't give me sorry, me. what is this about to be Tekken Ultimate? Like I'm about to have characters <laughs> across the map. Like yeah, there's gonna I got, be that. Break. I gotta go to a drop down bar to get to the, my other man. That's if it's not like that, then why would you get like why I would have? Let me tell you, I'd have been happy with two game modes, two maps, five four characters, two characters. three. Yeah, two, two, no. two. Yeah, bro. Two, that's two, what, two. Don't like, ruin the game. Because people part. are going to be out here playing. And the then the, and then the fact that there's no story mode. You already told us that. Yeah. There's no story. I'm, you already ripped that. Like I said you before, already I, I stand by, and I've already said that. I already talked about that. I just think that if you're giving us more than 10% of the game, it's too much. And then also, if the Battle Royale comes out, and I don't want to be. Here's, that, I, I got to be that guy. Quick. So I'm not going to be I, that guy. <laughs> well, this is well. I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on this. What knowing that a majority of people only play Fortnite for the battle royale. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. I, That's I, I I do know people who play the story because it's sad because the story is actually pretty good and they put a lot of work into it. And it's very great. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Know. Um, but I nobody know gives. So that wanted to. And he was like, come yeah. on, man, let's get it. And I'm like, I'm like nah, mm, I don't know, homie. I, I'd rather just play the beta. But, uh, but okay, <laughs> so you have, um, and oh, and did you see that the hard copies of Fortnite, the original release, they're going for like thousands, well, like people are paying top dollar for it. It's just crazy. Yeah, well, man. but, but my, ruling the oh, world yeah. right now. Oh, oh, and I can get on that too, but I'm not. Um, so. <laughs> The point is, would you pay sixty dollars for Fortnite, knowing no. you're only going to pay play the battle royale, and knowing that PUBG's out there for thirty, no. or so in saying okay. that? Okay, but remember, I, and I'm gonna say this: I I do think Call of Duty is going to give us a different experience because it's well, gonna we be, know that it's going to be first person. Play, it's going to be first person. Uh, first person. It's going to be FPS. What if it's not? I'm not buying it. <laughs> what if the I'm, battle royale is first person? I'm not buying it. I, they Wouldn't listen, that Call of Duty, be hilarious? Call of Duty tried third person back in Call of Duty Ghosts, and that shit didn't work. So if they do it again, I'm not buying that shit. I tell you that oh, much. Wow. I'll be the first to tell you I'm not buying it. I'd rather I look forward to I look forward to parachuting in uh and with I, uh, first another, person and landing. Another, like Medal of Honor, remember that but airborne? That, you, you know, well, no, I, Island of the Nine, I believe, is third person, is first person, and that's ah, okay. I haven't played it. Yeah, I, I, I think that's only first person. I'm not 100 percent sure though. Um, but it does make it Call immersive. Of, I'm Call not of, Call ahead. of Duty is going to give us a different, I mean, a different perspective in the world of uh, battle royale games, because, like I said, they bring to you. A thirty, a uh, sixty frames per, uh, sixty frames per second shooter, which PUBG is not. You can't really compare it to Fortnite because Fortnite is its own fucking demon. Like, do you think gods. they're going to be able to keep the frames on console in a um in a I, big enough world? I, this, because let me tell you, the only they're reason gonna... they're able to be sixty frames is because of how small the maps are a bit. On console, they're contained area. Yes. It, well, this is, this is what I'm excited to see. I don't know. Yeah. We don't know. We've seen Call of Duty make big maps before. I'm not sure what the limit is to a map that controls the frames per second, but... Vehicles. 
helicopters, verticality. Yeah. They had buildings, they not had, like they had a helicopter. Yeah, it was a helicopter in it. That's all you got to say. It's a fucking yeah. Four people was sitting in a helicopter shooting. And one got his brain HPs. blown out. Uh. That I dropped. I dropped the mouse on that. But this is why yeah. I say it's going to bring a different perspective because of it being a Call of Duty franchise in a realm in a in a in something that is taking over the world. Yeah. Like this battle royale games are taking over the world right now, and people yeah. are playing them. And I'm not knocking the fact that people are playing them. I'm just saying that if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. So you're right. True. If I mean people go, I'm people are gonna buy it. Hell, I may, oh, I may I'm gonna buy it. If it costs money, if it ain't nothing crazy, I'm probably gonna buy Call of Duty, the battle royale part. But, but let yeah, me, I might but let me buy the game. But but let me tell you one thing that already deter. Okay, these are the things that deterred me from it. We talked about it. What? The the fact that they pulled the story mode. And the fact that the season pass is the only way to get any DLC. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not okay. I already I already told you how I feel about the story. We already talked really, about that. Didn't yeah. really care about that too much. Uh, the DLC part scares me. The DLC, yeah. the DLC. You part have to me, buy a season but pass. I'm not I'm not dedicated into Call of Duty like that no more. Where I don't care about the DLCs. So sure. I'm not really worried about that. If it's say it say it's good, say it's great. I'm probably going if it's great. I'm going to spend the money on it. If I can see, well, yeah, playing as it should be. You know year, what I mean? I'm going to spend the money on it. But as of right now, the standalone editions is what I'm rocking with. <laughs> and that's what, yeah, and that's true for the last few generations. Editions. And that's, that's all we've been playing. I'm not, I'm not that. You know, I'm not that into Call of Duty no more. Maybe it's so this crazy. Is the revival. <clears throat> like um it, it just it's so nuts because reboot. if you can't hear me reboot it for me you know i've always felt call of duty was a um was a time killer i've always felt like it was a numb time killer i always felt it was uh just something to pass pass it but um i uh what um i'm up check so you good? yeah all, all right. good so for me <sighs> I just always felt slighted. Mm -hmm. I've always, for the last since, honestly, for me, after Black Ops 1, I fell off. Because I felt like most of the innovation kind of fell off from there. Yeah. Because um, that's when they introduced zombies, right? No. They introduced. Uh, zombies was introduced. Was at modern. World at War. Was that. Oh, World at War. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take with me, and because I, I played Call of, Call of Duty 2. To me was or Call of Duty uh, Black Ops Two was the best Call of Duty game mm. ever to me. Modern Warfare Three was was okay. Ghost, yeah. go, the the actual um, the hit box and the and the hit registration in Ghost I think was the best. But I just didn't so it felt more game. realistic. Yeah, the gun it was like that game. It, that was that game. Call of Duty 2 was was to me was the best Call of Duty. I thought all most of the maps were good. I thought kill streaks were good, all of that stuff. Um <clears throat> I put it like this. I've been buying DLC since Modern Warfare 2, right? And I got into Modern Warfare 2 at like the middle stage of it. So gotcha. <clears throat> um when Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 when Modern Warfare 3 came out or when Black Ops came out it was you paid for the game and then you bought the season pass and the season pass gave you all three map packs. Mm -hmm. You paid 60 bucks. You paid an extra 60 bucks for the season pass. Right. And you got all three map packs because remember, it was only three map packs that gave you a certain amount of maps, certain amount of uh, it was only a certain amount of maps at that point. So. Yeah. I was cool with that because shit, I'm gonna buy them and each map pack by itself. If you don't buy the season pass is $39.99, 40 bucks. So I'm like, shit, I'm gonna buy it anyway. Buy the season buy pass. So I bought the season pass. I did that for Modern Warfare 2. Like I said, started in Modern Warfare 2 late. I did that for Modern Warfare 3. I did that for Black Ops. I did that for Black Ops 2. I did that for Ghost. Got you. That was it because I, I wasn't, I was falling off in Call of Duty like that. I wasn't really paying attention to it that much. 
And then it's, it became a different beast. Like they started adding in guns. They started adding in microtransactions. They started adding in all these other factors that kind of ruined that for me. Cause I can, I would make the argument on, okay, some people don't like the fact that you have to go out here and buy these DLCs. I'm okay with it, especially in black ops two, because they gave you, you didn't not, you not cause black ops two, I think did the zombies mode the best. In my opinion, because it was just revamped. It was literally zombies and you could do all these crazy things like they had one on the moon. They had these all these dope missions. They started adding in missions into the zombies mode, but then you can also still play it as a horde mode. So then they started giving us, excuse me, zombie maps and stuff like that. Once they start adding in new guns and 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 all of these microtransaction stuff, I think that's what killed it for me. I think that's where I kind of was like, mm, they doing too much. I'm good. So I this stopped, is... I completely stopped buying all of the, the season passes and stuff right after that. For me, um, I, I like to be lied to. Well, you know, lie to me. Mm-hmm. Tell me, don't don't sell me a game. Tell me a come don't tell me a game comes out uh August 2nd and then already have the dlc lined up with a release date mm-hmm. and already have it and then don't don't slip up and let reddit find out because i'm not gonna find out because i'm not breaking down code but don't let reddit find out that you already had the code in the game made into the game pre-made into the game so all you're gonna do is hit update mm-hmm. on that day and all of a sudden i ain't got to go click to download nothing i'm gonna just randomly update said, and it's already in it don't <laughs> lie to me like, don't even tell me the name of the DLC. Yeah. Because that means you already did it. Yeah. I figured you not you not about to tell me the name of your DLC. Like, you're not gonna tell me that and it's not complete. Mm-hmm. You telling me and th- don't show me pictures of the maps. Don't don't show me like I this is why I like Bethesda. This is why I like Bethesda. They said here's a season pass. Even though I still didn't buy it because I thought it was still stupid. Yeah. It was still stupid. You're selling me something and I have no idea what the hell it is. Which is kind of the counter argument to what I'm talking about. But this but that's the demise of a season pass period. Yeah. But I'd rather but this this see, you brought up a good point, especially with Bethesda. Let's specifically use Fallout 3. Because I bought yeah. every single one of them DLCs. And yeah, then I did I, too. And matter Twice, of fact, actually. I, yeah, me too. I fucked around, bought all the DLCs, right? And then bought the Game of the Year edition. Yep, same here. That's yeah. what I was saying. That's why I so bought it twice. That that came, that gave you all of the DLCs. Be- mm-hmm. And the only reason I did all of that is because I was buying everything Fallout. It was my first Fallout. You put me onto it. I was sitting there playing the hell out of that game. I we loved played every- the living Man, crap I loved out of everything three. about that game. And now you get to tell me like, oh yeah, game of this shit comes with all the DLCs. I bought, I bought a copy of that and had it. And but that's the but that's the makes you feel good about screwing you. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty just outright tells you they don't care and they're gonna take it. And they're gonna take your wallet like they. That's what they gonna do. Yeah. They look at you and say, hey, matter of fact, because we know you're gonna buy all the DLC. We're gonna make it to where you have to buy them all at once, but and there's no possible way for you, you to buy them separate. But you know we, what? You know what that says? You know what I I think consumers I think, are stupid. Well, yeah, that and I think that I think it's easier for them to cut and paste these games. The concept there you of these go. games are easier to cut and paste because if you if you if you draw yourself back and think about it, you can have you can say, all right, we're going into development, start creating these maps. And we're gonna work on the maps, and you you start creating them, start creating them, right? At the end, of, just like just like making a just like making a CD, right? Just think of you as a as a musician creating your body of work, and the label comes and says, "All right, it got to be twelve songs, right?" But you didn't been in his studio making 25, 80 songs. You got something to pick through. Now it's like, hmm, you know what? We're gonna push these seven over here. We're gonna give you all these eight maps. And then we're going to break these seven up and we're going to give y'all two maps, the first DLC, <laughs> another two. Years. And then, and, and then, then this they is, they really ain't got to work like that no more. And not in because of the fact of the cons- consumers are stupid and the fact of how, how much, uh, 
how much confidence they have in these games selling. Because shit, you just got to put Snap After Vision and Call of Duty on the motherfucker. It's gonna sell, bro. It could be a basket weaving game <laughs> and call it Call of Duty It'd underwater be a racing game, <laughs> bro. Hey, no, but this is but this is what gets me. People always, I, I love when people try to bring up, but what about how much money they spent on the game to make it? First off, they spend they usually spend more money on marketing than they do the actual creating of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, then. You have these massive groups of people creating this one game when you're using a majority of the engine and same structure from the game before. Yeah, that, see, I don't it, get it, that the fact if you're creating a new engine, that's different. Every game, I'm gonna have nothing to say to you. That's different. The fact that you're using the same engine across the board, then you have. Like you're think making me pay, you're making me pay for your unnecessary cost. Think about think about how many Call of Duty titles got the same Nuketown map, bro. <laughs> That's all you gotta think about. Oh, and all Nuketown, I, all, all and do, Nuketown looks like it's in uh, the Battle Royale map. All I got, all I gotta do is update the colors. Instead of having a bus, have a train. Move it, put mannequins in it. <laughs> That's all I got to do? She Might as well be good. I'm, I'm solid. But that's my point on it. I don't I don't really. I just I don't, think, don't, 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 don't screw me. Fans are going to be fans. And they're going to, they're going to buy it. Especially if you're yeah. a diehard fan. Which is fine. your favorite YouTuber play it. You're seeing your favorite, your favorite streamer play it. They're going to buy it. And I get that. But just be smart. Like if you're, you know what? I'm going I'm to say this. Especially to like y- the younger kids, because young as, when I was younger, even I had to have like, every game. Yeah, I had to have to, every game, man. Up to my twenties, like my twenty one, twenty two. Matter of fact, when I got with my wife, that's when I started thinking about that shit. Because back then I'm like, ooh, ooh, DLC, I'm about to buy it. Probably won't play it, but I'm gonna buy it. Because one day I'm gonna play it. Ooh, this game came out, I'm gonna buy it. I got all the Resident Evils downloaded, <laughs> all of them. And you probably played. All of them, <laughs> like one. <laughs> like, it, it's but see, it is, that's my point. It's like especially when you're little and you're not really, you're not thinking about it from the perspective, the old man perspective. Like yeah, it really is that we're really thinking, sitting here breaking down shit that as a kid you're not thinking about. As you're a not kid, thinking you about don't really care about. And that's um, it, it's I I just I love the idea. Of an informed consumer, yeah, because informed consumers, like really informed consumers, like truly, like adamant consu- informed consumers, w- would have stopped this DLC season pass shit. We mm-hmm. deal with. They would they would have crushed that because it would have been like no. That's why I'm happy with the way the loot box stuff is going on around the world. Now it's not so much happening here, but I like how they're cracking down on it to a point where they're trying to peg it under gambling or the spirit of gambling. Mm-hmm. And um, because you're abusing a system, especially now cosmetic loot boxes, I don't give to. We already talked about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we already we already went down that road. Mm-hmm. Um, but long story short, people, please, for the love of God and all that is holy, don't pre-order Call of Duty. Don't do it. <laughs> I know you are. You probably you already did because I think the beta comes out and you, everybody's <laughs> gonna. Oh, everybody's gonna be, yeah, everybody's gonna be playing it. Yeah. But I just, um, I really. Don't show we can't show these companies that this is okay. How do you have the nerve to look us in the face? Think about what's about to happen. They gave us something that Fortnite's already doing successfully. <laughs> that pub well, PUBG, you have to pay for it. For, for that's this is the point I'm making. You're giving me something that the most played game on the world is doing for free. You took away story mode, and then you're telling me that the only way I can keep you up with all my friends bringing, who have money... You can't keep bringing up the story mode part. Yes, I can. No, listen. You can't. Can you please listen to me? <laughs> then, so you're taking away story mode. You're giving me something that Fortnite does amazingly for free. And you got the nerve to tell me that I can't keep up with my friends who have more money than me by individually buying my DLC because I need to buy the full DLC up... Um, um up uh, up front mm-hmm. so it, it's it's absolute chaos i don't understand like well i i think i still think that remember well fortnite fortnite was a gamble 
because yeah, they Fortnite didn't intend for this to happen. What the way. fuck they were getting themselves no. into? Call yeah. of Duty don't have to gamble no more. They're True. solidified. So yeah. I, oh, I the know. name. The name. It's like iPhones. Like no matter how, no matter how much you, how many screens you break, <laughs> how many charge ports gonna, you destroy, man, how they much, gonna how keep much telling accessory ports that they take away from you, motherfuckers. It's name recognition. Everybody. Oh yeah, name recognition and elitism. They're gonna sell the hell out of yeah. iPhones. And call, I think uh, Call of Duty is at a point of, oh, we can do anything we want to do. Yes, I'm they can. And and I'm not. They once again, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad about that. Just like because otherwise I'd be pissed at 2K and all the sports games. Mm-hmm. I would be rabidly pissed at them. Yes, there's a more uh, consumer friendly way they could do the games, especially knowing oh, you're going to give me one every year. If you know you're going to give me the same title every year, like you know you are. Like it's it the fact that your ten year ten year run. Somebody looking at the screen like yeah, boy, I'm about to get this baby. Yeah. <laughs> More money, more money, we more money. To, we, we about to slap oh on the new Madden. We about to slap Terrell Owens on that mug. Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. Giving me characters that have been retired. Like, I, and then I you just, give me a Pokemon card version. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let's end it with this. I know we wanted to talk about GameStop <laughs> Elite Pro, but I'm gonna jump topics, and I want to go ahead and slap all you athletes, jocks, uh, LA Fitness pros <laughs> over the head. I got to hit you over the head with this. If you play fantasy football or any fantasy sports, you basically play a dumbed down version of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Instead of rolling the dice, your stats and abilities are based on actual real people. Mm-hmm. That's all that's happening. You're playing a simulated <clears throat> RPG. You're the role playing as a coach slash manager. Because if Period. you think about it, if, if if you can play you can play fantasy football with pen and paper. Thank <laughs> and you. Trash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank with you. Y'all paper. could be sitting up. You wear your manager. You could be out there looking like Bill Belichick with the cut sleeves, the sitting at a table every Sunday, and everybody sitting there with a board jotting off. Oh, so and so got five yards. Five that yards. gives me that gives me six point uh, point six points. points. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. running. Oh. oh. I'm rolling the dice, hoping that that they kick a field goal. People get mad at me and try to argue. I'm like, bro, that is you're playing a role playing tabletop game. Don't don't let one of these these Dungeon and Dragon pros get a hand on some fantasy baseball or football. Bro, it is over. It's done. It's done. Like it's it's so crazy. I'm sitting here. I don't know how that came about, but But it. it, it but you know what? The topic before that, I'm not gonna lie, does kind of tie into the the whole GameStop, and that'll be the last topic. Uh, Call of Duty's Elite Pro membership being you mean GameStop's Elite GameStop. Pro membership? Blah, 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 blah. See, ties into it. Unintentional, lama, lama, lama. unintentional, unintentional uh, segue. It just just like anybody, th- well, just like me and you and a couple other people ain't thinking about no goddamn uh, Call of Duty season pass. I was never thinking about GameStop's Elite Pro membership. When the young Let lady me... at GameStop told me, oh, yeah, well, you can use your points and get Elite Pro. Ain't I pro? I thought I was already Elite. She said, no, nah, yeah. you're pro. No, nah, <laughs> you're just pro. How I about you come, so up, disrespect come up here with an Aris Crisp? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, well, look. So this is, this is the thing. The only physical brick-and-mortar store that had an amazing gaming pro setup mm-hmm. was best buy and they canceled that earlier this year mm-hmm. right before i was getting ready to buy some more yeah because it's such an amazing they were selling brand new physical copies off top for 20 percent off and you would get a ten dollar pre-order bonus if you pre-ordered that bad boy okay. so you're i'm getting the game i would get brand new games for uh 40 bucks Fresh out the... I'm unsealing it. 40 bucks off top every new game. Day it came out. But now I buy digital, so it wasn't beneficial anymore. So I haven't used it because I've been buying digital. Okay. And it doesn't work for digital. Which but is weird to me. Yeah, well, no. It actually makes sense. And the whole dumb thing is the codes don't come from Best Buy. They're more or less funneled from microsoft and sony the, the and then they just there you go mm-hmm. that's the that's that's that whole weird 
Some, like, I can't wait till somebody gets a hold of that. Gets a hold oh, of it some fixes that. Contract oh, and be like, well, hey, guess yeah. what? But guess how it's already changing. There's there's day there's companies like um I think Steam. If you play within a certain hours, you can get your money back for a digital code. Mm. Yeah, it start. Yeah. We're start. So what you're saying that is in the near future. We're gonna see that point, especially if this whole Xbox Scorpio, or not Scorpio, Xbox uh, Scar goes full digital. We're really gonna see that. You don't say it out loud. I know. <laughs> they've already they've already basically said it. But what's so strange is. You know what it is, bro? That's that hype effect because the numbers say 60% of people want yeah. physical. Okay, so you're getting ready to change the whole industry for 30% of console right. play. So the, the listen, cuz they want to push that. They want to push cuz it's cheaper for them. Exactly. Not not because it's beneficial to us. Because guess what? This is this is how you know it's dumb with physical disc. Even though I love physical disc. Mm -hmm. This is so dumb. How is it that I put the physical disc in and the game still has a 12 gig update. <clears throat> Bruh, this yeah. is a Blu-ray disc. You gotta, I gotta Everything should be on there. I, gotta I should here. be able to put in and press play. I got to download the game data to the PlayStation or the Xbox. Then I got to put the update in there. Now, let me, prove, <laughs> let me prove the point of how bullshit this is. And this pissed me off to beyond everything. And I can't believe I didn't talk about it. And this is going to be the last thing I say. We got Xbox Game Pass, folks. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing. I love it. But it royally pissed me off because I already own Fallout 4. Physical. <laughs> hey, this what, he <laughs> what he just said, the game data, uh -huh. I did not have to reinstall Fallout 4. I was, as soon as I got Game Pass, it immediately loaded up. Didn't you already so, have it on there? Disc. I already had the disc game data. Yeah, that's but the game data is still the same game data. But Man. this is my point. How are you gonna sell me physical but not give me the power of digital, but you take up the space of the digital? Do you get my do you get my point? I, I never I no. never I never understood it either because I'm like, well shit, call it PlayStation 2, just pop that motherfucker in and play. But that this is but this is the bullshit of the bullshit factor. I I paid for the physical, but I got none of the benefits of the digital. But you still forced me to download it as if I had it digitally. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it. I, I paused my auto download. Yeah. Unless I set it for that game. That game was paused. How is it that I am able all I did was activate Game Pass? I didn't do nothing else. Boom. And I'm it, I'm able to switch back and forth. I'm, I, you know what? To, to be honest, I'm not sure what the the true benefits of having or it could be like settings and all that extra shit of what the game data exactly does. Because this, I mean, this stands back to the the, the old generations, uh, PlayStation Three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. You had to download the game data to play it, and um, I never understood that because I'm like, well, somebody shit, let me know in the comments, please. The game data that was frustrating because I'm, I used to think the same thing. Like, shit, if I download the game data, is the the fucking disc on the, the entire thing? game is on why there? like do I why do I have anymore? a like is the disc only proof that you have access to the game data? It could Ooh. that could be. Oh shit! Like, I guess you answer you. You probably already answered your question there. Let us know in the comments if yeah. I'm right, because that just, just made me mad. Listen, I never... They made, oh, damn, we're really over. Keep going. But uh, last point, I guess the reason why I wanted to talk about the, the membership pro, because uh, I was sitting here really thinking, trying to think what it gave you. And because um, when the lady told me, I really wasn't listening because I didn't care. I just wanted to go play Pokemon. Um, so uh, call, I guess the, the, the regular pro membership, which we most of us had, if you have, I have it. Yeah, that's what I got. It gives you 20 points for every dollar spent. 10% 10 percent off pre-owned games uh, and accessories. 10% towards extra trade credit on games, accessories, and techs. Buy two, get one free pre-owned game. Welcome offer. Exclusive pro day, se uh, exclusive pro day sales with over 4,000 in savings annually. 12 issues of Game Informer magazine and exclusive offers. Now, y'all could take that as face value or you could break it down deeper than that. Uh, but the the Elite Pro only gave you thirty points, a birthday offer, which who knows what that is, <laughs> a 
Uh, buy two, get one free on pre on game welcome offer. Which you got that in the regular one. you got one. that already. 20% off pre on games and accessories. 20% off extra traded games on. Uh, That's dope. Tech. I was cool with that because I've been buying yeah, a lot of pre on stuff. All right. But then. I'm not. I wasn't even too fond of the 10% extra trading because I haven't been really trading in games like that or the 20%. Now the 12 issues of Game Informer I already get that. Exclusive Pro Day sales I already get that. They say collectible welcome offers. Now whoever knows what that is, I don't know. They Let also us know say in the comments. Free two day shipping on orders over thirty five dollars. Now I. Never I feel like I should nothing. get free shipping on <laughs> anything over fifteen dollars. I'm I said sorry. That, I said that this is the thing. future. I'm, I'm like, what? We live in I'm the like, future. <laughs> I just paid sixty dollars plus tax for this damn game. I might, you might as well just send it to my crib for free. Free, to, free two day. I should be able to go pick it up in store on now. site. Exactly. Now, like ready, gift wrapped, <laughs> but with my sticker on it. Um, yeah. So I, I was sitting there and I was like, man, it really doesn't give you anything more to the yeah. pro. And I'm like, yo, I can't believe they really came out with this. I don't know when they came out with the Elite Pro, the whole deal. but It's I, probably been out for, what, like a year or so? Maybe two years? It has to years. be recent because I, like yeah. I recently this year started hearing people, talk, oh, the lady offering it to me and all of that. But, um, it, I mean, we we talked about this already. It is the end of this whole brick and mortar system, I believe, uh, soon to come. Because, look, GameStop looking for somebody to buy. And they're getting rid of stuff. I just think it's it's the end of it, man. It doesn't make any sense to go into a store and buy games unless you're collecting stuff. That's different. Because now I found myself going to outdoor swap meets and shit like that looking for like gems, looking for games that I may not have. This one sure. dude had a had a the clear blue uh N sixty four, but it was broke. Ice ball. Uh yeah. But it was broken. I'm like, damn, that would have been something crazy to pick up. I found myself doing that. I found myself having more fun going to those than going to. Now, see me. I really got into pop figures, which I've taken a big break from. Me too. Pop figures and uh, collectibles. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I got collectibles out the yin yang. Um, so that's why I once GameStop picked up Think Geek. I was going for that, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna shut up now because we're really crushing right now. Yeah, we what? Excuse me, yo. We good. Almost. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's gonna do it for me, man. Yeah, I'm. You know. That's it. I think we hit a gang of points today. Uh, lesson learned today. Don't pre-order Call of Duty. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just watch people play it. And if you want to really want to get a thrill, just stay away from Call of Duty. Period. Just play the old one. And then come back when the game come out. Oh, boom. I really stick it to the man and don't buy it at all and make him drop it free. <laughs> Ooh. I, we'll say that. Revolution. <laughs> Revolution. Rebel Eat your apples, folks. <laughs> Eat your apples. All right, man. Please. Peace out. Oh, subscribe and all that other good stuff and links below. Follow Tone Death. Shout out to y'all. Uh, That's real lazy. That apple making you real lazy. And stop smacking, please. man. All right, I'm out. Peace. He's smacking this please. shit. All right. Okay.